What's happening, folks? Phil Prince talking today about the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. Uh, really huge events, events that left pretty significant signatures on the landscape uh, right in the middle of North America, and some more subtle details, which are still pretty interesting, like the ones you are looking at at the end of this era. This is in Obion County, Tennessee. Uh, this little ridge here looks like it has sort of lines or cracks or something like that running along the crest. Uh, those are essentially landslide scarps, but it's a pretty specific type of landslide. Uh, it's related very much to those 1811 and 1812 earthquakes, and I'm going to show you how those formed. Uh, this is going to require a geological model here. This is just a simple model topographic ridge. It's a, a cake of sand with slope sides and kind of a flat top on it there. And it's about to experience earthquake shaking. So here we go. And once the movement starts, uh, pretty quickly you see these kind of crack looking features developing again. These are scarps, just like you saw in that shot from, uh, from Obion County in the LIDAR there. And the distinction again between a crack and a scarp is that a scarp has, has up and down relative motion on it. So we pause the video right here. If you look at the the crest of the ridge, it's now pretty irregular, and you can see these steps here. There's another step, and then steps on the opposite side, and those scarps sort of face each other. What's happened here with the shaking, the sides of the ridge move outward. That allows the top of it to sink down slightly, and the whole mass doesn't change shape at once. Uh, it, it moves as individual blocks, and they kind of move along on, on the shear planes um, that end up reaching the surface and producing those scarp features. So it's a pretty diagnostic topographic signature. Um, there's really not a not a way to make that in the landscape other than having uh, seismic shaking. And that seismic shaking is enough to actually get the ridge moving such that the sides can bulge outward and allow the, and allow the top to sink down there. This model's a, a pretty simple setup. This one has a little bit better foundation, if you will, for the ridge. And with the shaking, it still gets those scarp features. They're a little more subtle. They're smaller. They don't have quite as much movement and offset on them. But again, the, the overall effect is the same, which is sides move out and the top moves down. And that produces that very, very distinct topographic signature running along that ridge crest. And if you compare the model to a little bit closer look at that ridge in Obion County there, you can see the resemblance. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey did some fascinating work out here a few years back. Um, of course, I did not <laughs> I did not identify these. Uh, I think a guy named Ryan Gold did. I'm going to put a link in the description. Really awesome paper that they put together. Really cool visuals um, that sort of highlight these one-of-a-kind features. But there's quite a few of them. You're not used to looking at LIDAR. This may be a little bit like, yeah, whatever. Take a look at the real landscape, starting with New Madrid itself, and put those cracked ridges into context. And it's a pretty interesting story, uh, particularly with where they're located with respect to New Madrid and just how many of them there are. So New Madrid itself is on the Mississippi there. Pretty distinctive bend in the river. Uh, the Real Foot Fault actually runs right through here. This is Real Foot Lake. That's probably the biggest landscape feature that's related to the earthquakes. Uh, actual uplift of the ground during the earthquakes is, is what blocked off a channel there and produced that lake as you see today. But if we zoom in on a couple of these LIDAR panels here, you can get a sense of what the damaged ridges actually look like within the greater landscape. And the first example I showed you there is right now in the middle of the screen, you can see all those scarps running along the crest. There's more on the adjoining ridge, more there. Pretty well developed here. This one just has a major scarp on each side. So the entirety of this ridge crest just sort of sank down as one. You can see it there as well. And you could spend several minutes just going over this landscape and looking at additional examples of how ridges got shaken so much that the sides bulged out and the top sank down. And this is a, a pretty modest landscape topographically. I think the difference in elevation between the creek here and the top of the ridge is something like 60 or 70 feet, maybe about 20 meters. Uh, that said, it's a layer cake geology. Uh, it's actually a sequence of, of sediment layers and the very basal layer 
is pretty weak compared to what's above it. And with that shaking, that's what allows the sides of the ridge to bulge outward and the uh, and the top to sink down. And of course, as I said, there's no shortage of these. I put a few different LiDAR panels here together to show a few different examples. But once you've seen one and you know what it looks like, uh, you can find other ones pretty readily. This one's a pretty good one here. Really well-defined scarps. The summit of this ridge probably sank down several feet. If you were walking around in the woods, you would definitely see kind of rough and irregular step topography. I'm not sure if it would be immediately clear what it was uh, if you didn't know where you were and you didn't have a LiDAR image like this to look at, but that would be noticeable for sure on the ground. And as you look at the neighboring ridges here, no trouble in finding uh, sets of scarps there running along the summits. This extends for many, many miles uh, along this rugged topography that's separated from the Mississippi by these steep bluffs. Uh, here's another really cool example. This one has a couple of really crisp, well-defined areas where those ridges have, have sunk down as well. Uh, features like this don't last in the landscape forever, particularly in geology like this. And that's one reason that being able to see this with LIDAR is, is so interesting. It gives you an idea that this place experienced a pretty strong shaking pretty geologically recently. Uh, you can see really cool details if you zoom in here. These little gullies are actually cutting across some of those scarps. So the survival of those scarps in the landscape is really limited. And if you were to see a bunch of those with the aid of LIDAR, uh, it would be pretty clear to you that this is the kind of kind of place that's going to experience a uh, significant earthquake shaking. Uh, if you fade the images away, it's nothing but forest underneath there. So there's no way to pick this out from aerial photography or something like that. It's really only within the realm of LIDAR. And that's yet another reason why LIDAR is just revolutionizing the way people, uh, people do any aspect of geology, of course, particularly hazard assessment. So you can check this out uh, if you go on the National Map website and go to the viewer. It's possible to load up LiDAR hillshades and see these features from above. Of course, I've got them in Google Earth here, so we can kind of tilt and look from different angles. But it's a really interesting way to think about big earthquakes and what they can do to the landscape, particularly when the geologic details are just right to really focus that damage.